All right, y'all, what's going on? It's Combo Breaker 99. I'm back with another quick video, back with another UFC women's ranking update video. All right, y'all, this time we're going to talk about the pound for pound list because a few people have been talking about this on my channel and they just been talking about it over the all over the WMMA community and some people wanted to know my thoughts on it. So I said, all right, I'll do a video on it. But um, as y'all know now, since Amanda Nunez retired, the new pound for pound queen is Alexa Grasso, right? A lot of people are kind of up in arms about that some people agree some people disagree but in my opinion it's it just goes back to what the rankings is right you know some people can't really be disappointed in it or some people can't really invest too much in it and say like Grasso's the goat now right we can't take it to that level yet because this is still just like of current time right this ranking system is just of current time and what's going on right now in the fight game this is not a goat rankings this is not a legacy rankings type of thing this is just a current list of who the best fighters are right now pound for pound going by what they've done currently right that's why you know i don't really take too much into the pound for pound ranks because it's really fan based you know i have a lot of experience in these pound for pound rankings going all the way back to boxing you know like when i used to follow ring, ring magazine they always had their top 10 pound for pound ranking me and my dad used to follow it together sometimes we talk about who deserves to be on there who doesn't and who was just up there because of a current time you know they were a current champion right or who is just the most popular fighter right so i kind of look at this the same way you know the ufc's a pound for pound rankings are just done the same way you know they they take their best champions and they put them in the rankings that they feel like that that fighter is the best right and when you look at it this is what they're doing and you really can't argue it i mean last week lex grass was what number one number two right and the champ was Amanda Nunes, right? She was considered the number one pound for pound fighter for good reason. So once she retires, you automatically just move the next fighter up by default, right? Because that fighter is still currently one of the best fighters today because she beat the, the, the previous champion, right? So um, it wouldn't really make sense for them to make Valentina pound for pound number one when she has that loss to Grasso when two weeks ago, she was below Grasso, right? So it's just really an escalator system, right? When one person gets off, the next person's at the top, right? That's all it is, you know? So I can't really put too much into it and just say, okay, Grasso doesn't deserve it because she hasn't done this and that. No, like her record still stands the same out of all the other fighters. You know, she's on her 5-0 and win streak. She defeated a champion who was longtime reigning champion that had seven title defenses, right? So she was up under Amanda the way they had ranked her. So once Amanda retires, she moves up and Valentina Shevchenko takes the previous space just like she's supposed to right so you know I can't really take too much into it or argue it because again like people always say if you want to be the man you got to beat the man right so Grasso beat Shevchenko so she is the woman right so she is the woman now and that's just the way it stands like that's just pound for pound for today they're saying Grasso is the better fighter for you know pound for pound out of all these other women because you know she's beat one of the best fighters right and now some people want Wei Lee to jump ahead, but why wasn't she above Grasso two weeks ago? Right? Well, Wei Lee just trying to get back into her groove. You know, she just won her belt. She's a two-time champion, but you know, she needs to go back and, you know, do a little bit more, you know, beat a couple more fighters because she's still just coming not coming off of those two losses to Rose, but you know, she still has to erase that and put together another good win streak or maybe another good win like against Amanda Lamos who's coming up, right? Now, when you look at the resume, yeah, Zhang Wei Li has definitely beaten more champions and beaten some of the elites and strawweights and done much more bet, much more work and a lot more significant wins than Grasso when Grasso was at 115. But with those two losses, and then you got just factor in the the win streak that Grasso went on and beating this longtime reigning dominant champion you, you just have to rank her above her right so that's just what it is you know it should make these girls work even harder now you know just to say okay you know hey it can be done but um like i said i don't take too much into it that's just my thoughts on it like i agree with it you know because again it's by default thing she's the next best fighter now she beat valentina so pound for pound she is that fighter now does her legacy hold up right now and is does it this mean that she's the greatest of all time does this mean that she's better overall than valentina like she has better accomplishments than valentina and nunez no not at all she just beat this fighter so it puts her ahead because it's a ranking for current times it's just like with 
boxing, you know, like the best example I go back to is like 2003, 2004, because this is when I was really examining those pound for pounds and I was really getting pissed at one fighter because he had beat my favorite fighter. And y'all know I'm talking about Roy Jones Jr. Like back in like, um, okay, November, well, first March of 2003, Roy Jones, he really became pound for pound number one after he became a heavyweight champion, right? He was world champion of four weight classes, pound for pound number one, right? And then around the summertime, wintertime, you know, Antonio Tarver started, you know, staking his claim. He became light heavyweight champion. He wanted to fight Roy. He fought Roy in no November 2003, lost a close fight. Roy still pound for pound number one. So Tarver's somewhere at the bottom, right? Um, so Tarver's still fighting other fighters, you know, whatever. But he's waiting for that rematch now. You know, he fought enough fighters to get to pound for pound, like number 10 or something like that at the time. So he fights Roy in November 2003, all right? And 2004, Roy is still, like, number one pound for pound. He's still number one pound for pound because he hasn't fought anybody. You know, he beat Tarver. Um, going into May of 2004, him and Roy, they fight the second fight. And he beats Roy. He knocks Roy out. So by June of 2004, Tarver is now pound for pound. Um He's over Roy, but he doesn't go to number one, I believe. Like Bernard Hopkins actually takes that spot because, you know, Bernard Hopkins, he's doing his own thing in middleweight. And he's going on a dominant win streak. You know, he's he's dominating middleweight. He hasn't lost in forever. He's he, he's defended his belt like over 10, 11 times. So he goes to number one. But the point is, Antonio Tarver, he goes to number two and Roy falls to like number three or number four. All right. So once you beat that person that was considered pound for pound best, you will go over them, you know, that's just how it is. You know, you will go over them at that time because they lost that champion lost to that fighter. Right. So the same deal is going on now with Grasso. You know, Grasso beats Valentina, who is a long reigning champion. But since she's got the win over pound for pound, she's going to be seen as the better fighter for now. You know, so, again, it doesn't mean that overall this person's legacy is better or anything like that. It just means that right now this person owns a win over them. the same as in their actual division. Like at flyweight, the champion is Grasso and Valentina is now the number number one contender. So it's just carrying over into the pound for pound rank in the same way. Right. So that's all it is, guys. But that's what some people wanted to know about me, what I thought. That's all it is. It's just really a fan fan pick type of situation with these rankings. And um, that's just how they rank it. Just like boxing. You know, if one person loses that person, they're going to fall down their rankings plus the pound for pound rankings. You know, so it's nothing to really get uptight about. Grasso did her homework. She did what she was supposed to do. Like I said, beat Valentina. Well, she did what she was supposed to do and as far as homework, but she proved me wrong by beating Valentina. But yeah, that's just what it is, man. Um, it's nothing really serious, y'all. Some people are like, oh man, she don't deserve it. But yeah, in my opinion, she does. She just moves up because Amanda retires and boom, it's her. So yeah, guys, let me know in the comment section what y'all think. Who do y'all think is a pound from pound number one? Like I said, I don't really do the GOAT talk or even with the pound for pound status. I think it just comes down to who's really holding these belts and who's the most dominant champions. It was Amanda. Valentina just lost her title, so she's going to be somewhere around top three. But Grasso is that number one right now. When Valentina gets it back, if she, get, if she can get it back in dominant fashion, she'll be that one again. All right, guys. Combo Breaker 99. I'm out. Subscribe. Peace.